All right, hello, Divine Feminines. I'm here. I've survived. <laughs> I'm going to do a little reading for you today. I don't have all my decks. I did find one box of decks, so we're going to go with what we have. I pre-drew two cards from the Wild Alchemy, uh, the Wild Unknown Alchemy book and the Wild Unknown Archetypes book. These are two decks I've had for a very long time and have wanted to learn, and I thought, well, let's start here. So I pre-drew them so I could read and like reflect on them a bit. The two that we got today on this beautiful day, an important day, is the Self and the Azure Vault, the Blue Temple. And one of the things I noticed right away when I looked at these cards together is how little blue there is here and then also that these reminded me of pearls i have been lately on a very big pearl kick which is not really a whatever you call it gem, gem that i've really been interested in but i have been interested in the conch pearl which is a pink pearl but anyway I feel like right now there are some pearls within you that are trying to be discovered, that want to be uncovered by you. This card specifically references the third eye quite a bit and the color of the water and the in the sky and that blue is really the main color of our world our environment and what i find so interesting is in the chakras you know that comes into play in the throat um then we have a pearl here very close to the throat very close to the heart and i do feel at this time you're being drawn to speak with a lot of compassion, but also a lot of wisdom that you maybe don't know where it came from. It may be coming from your third eye, it may be coming from your higher self, it may be just coming through you for some unknown reason, but this is what I feel we're being drawn to do. So this is going to be one of the guiding forces of this reading you know i don't have my cards that i normally get um my signifiers from but we're gonna do these zebra very interesting right this is also a wild unknown deck but it has that third eye with the rainbow frog symbol of divine feminine tarantula for me the tarantula is always uh, it's oh wow very very special card on the bottom very spiritual card very interesting with the ouroboros here and then the eye as we are entering into cancer so for me tarantula always is like a card that is lying in wait Waiting for timing to be right, using its, look at that, we got Wheel of Fortune and the Queen of Wands, I believe it is, I haven't used this deck in so long, the Heart is the Queen, the Movement is the Knight, Nine of Pentacles and Wheel of Fortune, so let's see, let's do a split reading today, I have a lot of unusual cards out here telling me to use both of my tarot decks I have. This one actually has the full on top of it. I heard a reading the other day and I wish I could remember who it was, but she was saying that she felt the biggest leap to be made in the entire tarot was from the fool to the magician. And that is just understanding that you have what you need inside of you. Ten of Pentacles reversed, the Sage Hermit, 
Page of Swords, Eight of Wands, Justice, Five of Wands, Eight of Pentacles, Hangman, Four of Cups, Nine of Cups. Wow. Judgment and the Hermit. So double Hermit here with the Owl. Bottom of the deck, the Lovers. Wow. Divine Feminine, this is you. And let me say, you may feel like things are going in the wrong direction here. But this reading says they are turning around and you will be really pleased with the outcome and you will be surprised at what happens here. I'm going to use the vice versa for the masculine. I feel like you have decided not to reach out, not to make any moves, not to... It, it's an interesting energy because I feel like you're like, I'm not going to artificially like stick myself. I'm going to unstick myself. Oh, let's have a fool again. Um, but I'm also not going towards them. I see you've had a conflict here about... It has to do with... It's like your legacy, value, and worth. I feel like you feel misunderstood a lot of the time by people. Triple Hermit, Ten of Swords, Knight of Pentacles, wow, Four of Wands in the Upright, Four of Pentacles, you have Triple Fours here, Ten of Wands, King of Swords, uh, Emperor Reverse Wheel. Wow. The four ending cards are absolutely amazing. And then he has Nine of Cups. And look at that. Nine of Cups, Nine of Cups, and Knight of Swords on the, on the overall. <gasps> Empress on the bottom with the sun. No. I'm sorry. That's Judgment. You have Judgment too. Judgment and Hermit, and for your overall, and Lovers with Death, overall, uh, bottom of the deck, bottom of the deck, Empress, Judgment, and Justice, Judgment and Justice, and the Empress, all in the upright, his overall energy, Nine of Cups, and Knight of Swords. Wow, this is a crazy reading. You have 10, 10, 10. 10 of pentacles, 10 of swords, 10 of wands. The only 10 you don't have is the 10 of cups. You have two nine of cups and I think you both know that you're missing each other. You're missing the one cup. All right, I'm going to get a Moonology card for both of you. This is the weirdest collection of cards I have on this desk. Obviously, it's meant to be. All right, here we go. You have Don't Let Pride Get In Your Way. And he has a time for healing, balsamic moon. Overall, take time to breathe out, disseminating moon. Bring love into the situation, new moon in Aquarius. Three fours, three tens. It's a very stable energy. Very, very stable. Three hermits. 
this is a sage, so it's like, you know. He has something important to tell you. You know, the message always comes when there's this Knight of Swords, Nine of Cups, Four of Wands. He's, you know, the wheel is one of my favorite cards. And this one has the magician on it. Now he's holding an onk, right? The, what, the message I got right when I started shuffling and dealing this the spread for him was he's integrating his divine feminine part of him is dying so he can integrate this divine feminine and then this card came out it's sort of a surrender card but it also has a compass on the front of the coin and as you can see the emperor card has this yin yang moon sun you can see on both sides and then the flaming staff and two other staffs here. He's got something really, really important to say. This whole side is about what he has discovered. And he may have been forced, you know. So the hermit in this card has a staff with a snake wrapped around it, kind of like the Kundalini. Um, you can see the glowing egg, the moon with the face, which is, you know, very divine feminine. He has been speaking to the moon. He has been receiving very important information on this. I mean, eight of cups, four of pentacles. This is a very profound spiritual enlightenment journey he has been taken he has taken this is past and you during that time i think we're energetically giving to him in many ways the feminine has been called to make a sacrifice here you had to give up something we have the hangman in reverse you may be really questioning will this work out how will this work out there's an internal conflict that you had that it's important to address because that internal conflict is pointing you in a very important direction. And the message that's coming through is you don't need to tell anybody about this. Like, I think I gave that message or something similar to it right before I moved. And it's like, this is a lesson here about faith in the universe, understanding, trust in yourself. There's a very important It's like an illumination and an alignment all together. And I think it's, I remember last year, there was like such a highlight on Lionsgate. It went on for what felt like months. I don't feel that same thing here, but what I do feel is that Whatever really happened last year, which I'm like the worst at remembering those things, but I see that it's coming up 
to be finished, done. It's almost, they're showing me like, like burying it in the earth or throwing it away. It's coming full circle is what they want to say. And what's beautiful about this water and fire combination is that, you know, in some traditions, um, that, that is power, fire and water. And I see that here. I see this panther kind of image has been with me for a while. And I love this bat image. I love bats. I feel this is such a beautiful deck. Uh, it's a naked heart deck, but it's so beautiful. Um, in my other animal deck, that bat is a symbol of rebirth. And I really like, oh man, I'm in shorts and I'm on my chair and I'm stuck to it. Okay. Um, you know, this is a beautiful image, right? The butterfly with the eyes. There is something about flight here. Becoming a lighter, I think there's baggage that needs to be, they're using the word expunged. I don't even know what that is. I think it's like when a country or, or a governing body clears someone's record. And I've never seen this before, but the scales have these stars in them here. And, you know, one side of the blade is white and one side has this shadow on it and this seems to be important here with this laurel reef wreath there's this victory that's coming it has the libra glyph on it up here too it may may for some of you take all the way to libra season to get there but I think there's going to be some very pivotal moments along the way this feels like a more meta reading like we have Leo we have a lot of water here right the, this cancer element we have the hermit three times Virgo and we have Libra several times judgment oh that's Scorpio um justice here and there is something here about patience allowing things to come full circle this seems to be a very important aspect for you sitting on this throne here although this is him right we have judgment again and the empress and then justice important under that is the high priestess with wow the lovers and then the eight of wands They're coming into a time of very, very important knowing. There's a revelation that is occurring for them that will change everything about how they see the world. And I know that's a big kind of thing, but, but this is like, this changes this is changing the world energy right here changing their world like 
there's times when your world has been changed and you saw things from a completely different vantage point. Look at that. I just ended on paradise with that kind of. Wow. That's crazy. Okay. So what I did want to tell you in the beginning that reminding me is that Look at that. Bottom of the deck, Paradise, The Chaser, Separation in Reverse, Sunglasses. Okay. These are intense cards, I'm not going to lie. These are very intense cards. This confrontation here, this... I hope it doesn't drop. There's, there's, my stuff is just everywhere. I'm unpacking boxes like 24 seven. So, um, this happens, I would almost say a wedding, an event, or at someone's house that's significant, something like that. This conversation, when this happens, it's like a, before this conversation and, a, and a after this conversation. It is like a very important conversation. Your world will change, his world will change, and things will be drastically different after this. The, he says what he needs to say. And you're guided right now to wait. Okay, let's get into it because I feel like you're having a very big transformation all on your own. And I think that's what's... Oh, my body's getting super hot now. I think that's what's kind of making this all occur. They're saying precipitating it for some reason. It's almost like they're using an analogy where your solar plexus and self-concept grew so strong over the last year. It's like that's what you've been working on. And now your heart is unlocking, which is where this water is, and it's kind of raining down this is the weirdest analogy. Stick with it for a second. It's like your heart is opening and it's raining emotions and you're feeling all of these things and it's causing, it's hitting this like bright sun in your solar plexus. Cause I remember a couple of months ago, they kept going on and on about the sun and the solar plexus and it was just radiating out. I don't know how long ago it was, but I remember it. And it's causing this steam, this rise in your power. Now, a lot of people have a negative connotation of that word. This is not negative. They want me to emphasize power is just like money. It can be used in the way of the vibration of the person holding it, okay? So, It's kind of hitting the upper area here of your throat. It's kind of blocked. It's not blocked, but I'm sorry. It's not how it's really plus this really dense energy. Okay. It's there's some things between where we saw the pearls. There's some things here around your throat chakra that it's kind of catching on. It's con so it's, it's condensing and forming into like little water droplets. And what's basically happening here is that this this is going to just get kind of, can I 
a nice way of saying that. Removed. Um, from the work you're doing. So I hope that's clear. You're going to be very comfortable very soon speaking about your emotions and being vulnerable and understanding what vulnerability actually means and why you felt it. This is like the work that's going on here. This is the shadow work that's being done and overcoming, it's really beautiful actually, overcoming this, this fear that kind of lives, lives in your subconscious. Like the panther in the back, right? These are our, these are our fears. And some of it is occult stuff. Some of it is like ancestral stuff. Some of it's just that stuff that we can't really face. And if you've been working on transformation or you've asked for ascension or you're, whatever the way you do it is, um, prayer, whatever. Your soul is getting ready to take like a quantum leap here. So, bringing it back to him because this is the important part here, over here. He, in his own way, has been transmuting a lot of very very dense karma. This is very dense karma. You're going to see he will come to you in a much lighter fashion. But when this conversation happens, there may indeed be alcohol involved. So they see that pretty significantly. Um, so let's get to the black cards because this has to do with karmic relationships that may be having had a great impact on this this bigger relationship here. And I actually see that there may be two or three other people that have kind of been involved with this relationship that remember karmic relationships, teach lessons that the twins can't teach each other. They're not bad, they're not good, they're not specifically designed to hurt you. They are working through, you know, old karma from different lifetimes, but some of you are still even questioning like your empress status you know look at that star like above her head right there you know <laughs> i'm showing the back of the card has basically like a nuclear explosion it may feel like you've gone through that it may feel like things are destroyed and i felt that over here i felt that there was a big you know when this is really an interesting card so we have the owl the star the trees the mountains the key and the turtle so the key for me is always Chiron the mountains in tarot are always obstacles. The owl is wisdom. And then we have the Virgo glyph. And not only here are there mountains, but then there's also trees, even like three or four times higher than the mountains. So you've had to face 
very significant obstacles, you know. It has not been easy. And these are two really interesting cards together. Part of what you have hidden is going to come to the surface. And this is what I was talking about. It's like the stuff that you didn't used to be able to talk about that felt too vulnerable, that triggered you, all of that is going to change. And again, you know, very interestingly, on the bottom of the deck, we have a card with trees, water, and the sun in its own little universe. Happiness, expansion, joy, playfulness, oneness, enjoying each other. I feel like you're going to feel like there is a paradise that you have created and that's going to show itself in your world. All right, so what else do we need to know here? All right, let's get some of these. I don't have any of my vice cards or anything, so, well, there we go. Sovereignty. It's an important lesson to learn that you're, it says queen of the moon. So the moon's played a very important role in this reading. It's very noisy outside. There's a lot of stuff going on. Empress, basically. Wisdom, interesting. Pleasure. Bottom of the deck is boundaries. Waxing, give us moon, and surrender. And I kind of knew when I sat down that there was going to be a siren during this reading. They were kind of telling me. It's actually a huge fire truck, the ladder truck, and it is going into the complex right next to, like the neighborhood right next, across the street. So that's very interesting. <laughs> Um, if it comes into play, we will use it more. So he has 22, 41, 38, which is 11. Hunter Moon. She's holding a fox, and there's more foxes down here, and a lot of animals around her. It seems an important message here to understand that you need to concentrate on your own sovereignty, your own abundance, your own ability to stand on your own and not have anybody, it's such a beautiful card, not have anybody dictate to you. And she has that, that high priestess um, crown on and symbol over her third eye. It's like, you have already gained the wisdom that he's gaining now. And you know, he's on a boat in the water, standing on books, reaching towards the moon which is, you know, he's doing that a lot. He's looking for wisdom. He's looking for understanding. He's looking for something much more deep than he's ever known before. And I think you've already crossed that kind of 
threshold. You've already made that journey. Um, there's sort of a warning here that in this quest for sovereignty, you may indeed turn into the runner and it does happen in this journey. I don't know, I get the feeling he's seen this karmic either one or many for what they actually are here. And you know, again, we have the palm tree. So we've had it the three times now. But this isn't something he could see in his future. It isn't something he wants to grow anymore. It isn't something that he wants to put an end basically to whatever this karmic situations were. Water element, fourth house roots, Aries, Capricorn. So we're having the Capricorn full moon, eighth house, endings and beginnings, Pisces, I believe, 12th house, moon, earth, and Neptune. And then Mars, third house, and Jupiter. So these messages will be having a lot of force behind them. There will be a lot of fire. A lot of benefit will come from these messages. I think you're going to have to really tap into your wisdom. And your healing that you've done through this Chiron transit of Aries is what this is indicating to me. This has been an eight year transit. And we are revising, you know, ourselves. And this Capricorn, you know, Capricorn is in my eighth house, but this Capricorn full moon, there's actually two of them. And I think that's important is that we're going to get kind of two cycles here. And this is a 22 card that, and now we've had that twice, I think, right? We had, yep, look at that. That's crazy, by the way. 22, 22. You're gonna get two cycles here to, and I said sacrifice earlier. You're going to get two cycles of this moon, the two card, earth element stability, which is 38, the 11. And then Neptune 10, sacrifice. So now we have four tens to complete this cycle. It's going to be very interesting. A lot of it has to do with your boundaries. And your boundaries are going to be reflecting this power this rise in power that you feel between your self-concept and your emotional healing that you've done from this, your history, soul love, inner voice, you are the universe, let your light shine, beautiful, enlightenment sensitivity, divine masculine, insight, grounding, beautiful tree, authentic, authentic truth, transform. So a very clear message for me that you're really entering, I think today, this double cycle, full moon, new moon, full moon. 
where Capricorn is in your chart specifically will tell you a key. I think look at where Capricorn is, um, what planets are there. Look at where Aries is, what planets are there. And then at the midpoint, and, and probably where Pisces is, um, to what you're going to have to work around, like with the sacrifice, could be also fourth house, right? That is Cancer and that is our roots. And that'll be your IC, your childhood. And then, so this is really on that Capricorn Cancer axis possibly the Pisces Virgo access, right? For me, that's fourth and eighth house, 12th and, um, second house, whatever. They're not, they're not, are they lining up? Yeah, 12th and fourth house. It would be my 12th and 6th though, isn't it? No, it's 12th and 4th. Okay, sorry. <laughs> you might also want to look where Neptune is in your chart. And if you don't follow astrology, that's fine. Just use your intuition. Um... Yeah, so I think that's what I have to say. This is a very beautiful reading. I think there's a very important, beautiful conversation coming up that the masculine has had very deep insight into himself, into his psyche, into, and the more comfortable you get with being vulnerable, the more that will reflect in him. Yeah, you've had many cards now of stillness. Strength, balance, self-worth, mother earth, shadow self, be fearless and unconditional love. Beautiful. Yeah. Anywhere you're not giving yourself unconditional love, look deep into that. You may also want to look at your third house and your Mars and your Jupiter, but this is basically, I'm saying just everything, but these are the main forces that have been coming out here. Um... He is revising what he believes to be true about himself. And to do that, he's going deep into this shadow world of the safe house. And that may have a lot to do for him with money, with how he doesn't speak his truth and why he doesn't. And this has been, this has become a big burden on him. You know, when we seek acceptance and we morph ourselves to become a version that people can accept, we kind of lose ourselves, right? To do that, we have to put basically our entire self into the shadow. That means we really don't feel love for ourselves. And the process of enlightenment is seeking, is, is shining that light into the shadow, you know? And finding the truth of who you are. And understand, I love this card. You know, it had, look at that, that's crazy. So we had boundaries, surrender, self-reflection with the, Twins holding hands, looking in the mirror with the full moon power. And look at you taking that moon just into the full, like, the full shadow. And he's, you know, immersed in the water here. So there is, this is a very deep reading. I hope I did it justice. You know, you're giving, you're getting this chance right now to, what I feel coming through here is to revise your sixth house daily practices and health practices and habits. Um, it might not be for all of you, but I feel it really strongly here that 
the way you're going to show yourself more self-love, it's not like these extravagant, uh, I'm buying, you know, Prada shoes or taking this elaborate bubble bath or going to the spa, which is all fantastic. I'm totally for it. But what they're showing me is that it's the discipline you have to install the practices in your daily life, in your home, in your, you know, I get up and I do this most important thing for me to focus on, to set the tone of my day, to ensure that I am the creator of my experience. I am focusing myself on this beautiful vibration, the vibration I choose. And I'm doing that by the daily habits and practices and boundaries that I have. Oh, oh, this person needs this, not before I do my self-love practice, my exercise, my affirmations, my journaling, my scripting, my whatever it is that you do to set that tone for yourself, to focus your vibration in the place that you want it. You're, you may have to sacrifice some of the things that you used to do in order to tell the universe that this is what I'm choosing. I'm choosing something different. And I'm showing you that I'm choosing this by what I'm doing, right? And understanding that that universe that you align with is the universe that you are in harmony with. And the harmony comes from the choice and the discipline to create it. Um, I hope that helps you. Thank you for being here for the first reading in my new house. And... I'm sending you tons of love and light. Bye for now.